Hello and welcome to my Tesla Model 3. This is the 2024.8.7 update that I received the other day. And if you go into the main screen and click on software and then click on release notes, we notice that it only lists one item called security improvements, which when I looked those up, there was nothing specific to talk about. However, this update is more than just this. There was also a 2024.8 update that included a change called one-time charge limit. And that's if you're planning on a road trip, you can choose the one-time charge option. And this option appears when you increase the charge limit above the daily driving recommendation. Afterward, your vehicle will automatically revert back to your previous daily driving charge limit. So if we go into the software and go to charging, the daily, as you can see here, is anywhere from 50 to 80%. And I, since this car is not being used very often, I usually keep it around the 60% mark. However, if I'm going on a trip and I want to change it, usually you'd like to start a trip at over 90%, even 100% if you need to get that little extra distance to get to the first supercharger. So if I change mine right now to 100%, a little dialog box comes up and says, keep, so you can make this change permanent or one-time charge. So I'm gonna click on one-time charge and it will accept that. So that's an interesting thing. I think it's pretty handy because if you accidentally leave it at 100% and always charge at 100% for NMC batteries like mine, that's not a good thing. It's not good to charge over 90%, especially not at 100% and leave it at that 100% for a long time. Conversely, it's not good to leave the car at under 20% either for a long period of time. The car does best when it's kept in that happy medium between 20 and 80%. The next thing that I've noticed not on the release notes is an option called danger zones on your route. Navigation now includes symbols along your route to show danger zones. To see this route information, you must have navigation, online routing turned on, and it also requires premium connectivity. So if I go into the main menu, click on navigation, then you got some settings here you can adjust and online routing is listed as checked on for mine. So that's good. And I'm going to display a little chart showing the 11 icons that you may see while driving. The first one is average speed camera. Instead of recording your speed a specific moment in time, these systems use two or more cameras to determine your average speed between two points. If your average speed is higher than the speed limit, then you are speeding and may be ticketed. The next one is caution lights. It's not clear what this icon represents, but it may be used to identify flashing yellow lights. Then we have construction, an icon that alerts you of recent construction areas. Danger zone. A danger zone is defined by local law and provided by local government. It's only available in select regions. Next, we have fixed speed camera. Fixed speed cameras capture the vehicle's speed at a specific location. Then we have mobile speed camera. A mobile speed camera is when a speed camera is mounted to a vehicle instead of being part of the city structure. Police. An icon may display the location of police or police departments. Next, we have red light speed camera. A red light speed camera is usually mounted on traffic lights or near an intersection. The camera aims to capture the license plate of any vehicle crossing the intersection if the light has turned red. Next, we have speed camera generic. This appears to be a generic icon for speed cameras on the map. It's possibly used if Tesla doesn't know the type of camera at this location. Next, we have stop sign, a traditional stop sign. It'd be a great addition if Tesla would include whether the intersection has a stop sign in all directions or if the crossing street doesn't stop. And lastly, we have traffic light. A traffic light is more than one light. And then all of these icons, availability and display is dependent on your region 
and not all icons are available in all regions. So that's basically a summary of the danger zones, which you may or may not see. Um, I'm going to keep a lookout and see if that's something that I noticed on my navigation. And next we get to a whole bunch of undocumented features. First up is windshield washer. The nozzle that sprays your windshield when the left stock or steering wheel button, which is model dependent, is held down, previously only sprayed the windshield when the wipers were in their lower position. With this update, the nozzle will spray the windshield anytime the button is held for a brief period, regardless of the wiper's position. So this may be handier if you have a stubborn section on your windshield that needs to be cleaned while you're driving, for example, a bug splatter. Next, we have Fold Mirrors button. The Fold Mirrors button under controls has been updated to have multiple states. The mirror now has four states. We have Fold Mirrors. This button will fold your mirrors and then briefly change to Save Location. Save Location, if your mirrors were recently folded, then you'll be presented with a Save Location button that will cause the vehicle to always fold its mirrors when it arrives near this location. Next, we have Remove Location. If your mirrors are set to be folded at the current location, the button will change to Remove Location letting you remove the automatic folding of the mirrors at this location. And finally, we have unfold mirrors. If your mirrors are currently folded, but not sent to fold automatically based on the location, then the button will simply display unfold mirrors. So let me go through right now and show you that. If I go to controls, there's the fold mirrors button. And if I click on that, then we have a save location. If I click save location, comes a little blue mark here. Then notice that the button is now blue. So whenever I come back to my garage, it'll have this saved. So if I click on the button unfold, it unfolds the mirrors. And now I can hit remove location and that removes the save. And now it's back to the regular fold mirrors or unfold mirrors. This makes it a little bit easier. Uh, there was a previous way of saving your location, but that required a separate screen. Now they've built it all into the same button, which I think is probably a little more intuitive and easier to use. Next, we have the connectivity icon. Tesla's connectivity icon is now always displayed in the status bar to give you instant access to the vehicle's signal strength. Prior to this update, the cellular connection icon was only displayed if it was low or no coverage, or if you went into the main controls menu. So if I go onto the screen right now, we'll see the icon for Wi-Fi. If I click on that, it brings up the menu. And that in fact brings up a new item here, the new Wi-Fi menu. There is a new Wi-Fi menu that makes it easier to connect your vehicle to Wi-Fi. This menu can be found under Controls, WLAN, Wi-Fi. The updated menu replaces the old dialog box that appears when you tap the Wi-Fi icon at the top of the Controls menu. The status icons at the top of the screen are still present to let you quickly view whether the vehicle is connected to Wi-Fi and its signal strength. And as you can see here, there's more information on this. You can enter your Wi-Fi information, for your access point, and it has known Wi-Fi networks. So this is actually a little bit uh, nicer to use now. And now you can turn off Wi-Fi with this little toggle right here. Next, we have a new Bluetooth menu. So if we click on the Bluetooth icon, similar to Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth menu is now located under Controls Bluetooth instead of an overlay on the screen. To make additional room for the additional Wi-Fi and Bluetooth options in the left column, you can now scroll the column vertically with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and upgrades being the last options. The Bluetooth icon will also remain at the top of the screen to quickly let you know whether any Bluetooth devices are connected. So as you can see, I have my paired devices right here. 
and it shows which ones are connected or not connected. You can also search for nearby devices. There's a start search button right here. So just a little clearer view of how they reorganized the devices for your Bluetooth. The last thing that I have on my list is turn signals. The vehicle's turn signal icons are now easier to see at a glance. Instead of an arrow being inside of a circle, the new turn signals are now simply arrows, which better matches other vehicles. So for example, if I look at the main screen here and turn on the turn signal, I got the left turn signal going, and now it is just an arrow that flashes. Here's the right one. So a little bit easier to see, I think, by not having it as a circle with an arrow in it. So just a little bit of fine tuning of the user interface. Well, that's all the things that I can find today. Uh, thanks goes out to Not A Tesla app for compiling the list of all the undocumented features for these software releases. They are a great resource. If you have any other things you've noticed with this update, please let me know in the comments section. And if you have a favorite change on this update, let me know that as well. That should do it for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.